Okay, I'm, I'm gonna tie my version of a fly called the black and gold. Um, I tie it on an Alec Jackson gold spay hook. I, I don't know if that matters to the fish, but it sure does to me. It seems to work better for me. It makes a prettier fly. And steelhead fishing is a lot of chucking for the tugs that you get, so you might as well be fishing with something that makes you happy. Anyway, I'm gonna start that thread right about there which is a little further forward than a lot of guys will tell you. And I'm not gonna take her back very far. I'm tying this fly low water style. So I'm just gonna run my body back to about where that thing starts to curve down pretty severely, pretty short body. And I'm gonna take a couple, I've already picked out a couple feathers from a golden pheasant crest that's dyed scarlet. That's basically the whole thing in, in, with the tippets and the beak. You know, what I'm doing is I'm basically just stripping out the short barbs. I don't want those in there. I'm gonna get rid of them and that leaves me with a feather that looks like that. I'm gonna do that the same thing with another one. I'm just gonna grab the long ones and strip the short ones out. Okay, now I'm going to grab these two feathers and I'm going to superimpose them together. And I'm going to stick them in my mouth and slick them up a little. And the only reason I did that is because it makes it a whole lot easier to tie these feathers in. And I'm just going to come in here and kind of loosely tie that in on the top. Check and make sure it's cocked the way that I want it, and it is. So I'm just gonna take this forward with some tighter wraps. Trim that out behind that return wire there. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with a little gold tinsel. I'm gonna tie this in on the back side of the hook and run it down along the bottom. Okay. I'm just gonna run that up just a little bit. Grab some of this SLF black. This has been around for a long time, so I'm just gonna kind of loosen it up a little bit so it's easier to work with. And I'm gonna come in here and just start dubbing a body. Usually when I'm tying steely flies, I'm not in a hurry, so I just try to put it on there as evenly as I can. And on this fly, I don't need a lot of body. The more dubbing I put on the fly, the worse it's gonna swim, so I just want it enough to give you the idea that it's got a body but still keep it skinny. Okay, now I'm gonna wrap back a little bit, start right in front of that, and start wrapping forward, trying to keep that body even as I go. Loose but even and small. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna have to add a little bit more dubbing. Just gonna keep working my way forward. Just a tiny bit more dubbing here to clean this up a little bit. Then I'm just gonna come in here with my fingers. I'm gonna pull that all back and out of the way. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna wrap the body with the tinsel. I'm not worried, a lot of people will tell you that the tinsel will show up better if, if you reverse wrap, but I'm not worried about that. I'm just gonna try to take about five wraps of tinsel up this body. I'm gonna tie it off underneath. Reach in there and grab that. Okay, now I'm just gonna come in and just kind of clean it up just a little bit because Ricky wouldn't let me. 
hear the end of it if I didn't. And <laughs> I'm gonna grab a guinea feather. And I kind of like the, the guinea with the real fine spotting on it for this fly. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a couple of feathers out of here, probably. That one's broken. To find one good one. Okay, now I'm gonna check that fiber length. I want it to go back past the body. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna just push this down out of the way here and strip it. Then I'm gonna grab this, pull that down, just like that. Okay, now I'm gonna tie this in on the top, kind of on my side. Make sure that that sucker's in there good. Trim her out close. Okay, now I'm gonna lift it straight up in the air like this, wet my fingers a little, and fold that hackle back. Okay, now if I've got some flyers right now, I'm not too concerned about that because I can just push them out of the way and keep folding them as I go. Fold another one back. And what I'm trying to do with that stem is I'm trying to lay that stem right in front of where that last wrap of the stem was. Okay. I'm gonna tie that off. Bust that out, and I've got, you can see, one broken barb. All I gotta do is pull that out. And then I just kinda take my fingers like this and separate that guinea. I'll look over the front, and it should all kinda stream back into it like that. You see how that's going back about halfway into the tail with the longest barbs? Okay, I'm gonna grab Arctic Fox. This is a new tail, so it's kind of hard to get at it. Just going to kind of push as much of that out of the way as I can. Get down close to the hide. Trim that out. I've got way more than I need right here. So before I do anything, I'm just going to cut that in half. And then I'm gonna grab this out by the tips, peel that under fur out. And if there's some longer ones I don't like, I'm gonna get rid of them too. I'm just kinda of basically trying to even that up. Get rid of the funky looking ones. And I'm gonna put that up against the fly and kinda of see if I need to pull some more out, and I do. So I'm going to grab that again, preen it a little bit more, and I'm going to come right to in front of that hackle, leave at least a, a little thread wrap space in between the hackle and, and where you tie your wing in because you don't want to flatten that hackle down too much. I'm going to come back in here and that's going to be a little longer than the hackle. I'm just going to trim that off. and tie that in. And I want to make sure that that's coming right off the top of the hook. And it is. Okay, now I'm going to grab a couple of golden pheasant rump feathers. And I'm going to superimpose them over the top of each other. 
grab them and strip the fluff out on the bottom. Like if there's some fibers that are a little too short, I'm going to get rid of those. Okay, basically what I've got is two feathers superimposed over the top of each other. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of that mottled feather down on the bottom, which is going to make it easier for me to tie this thing in. Just make it easier. You see that? Okay, now I'm going to come over the top and I'm going to put this thing right straight down on top of the fly. And I'm going to make a couple of loose wraps, one right in front of the other one, and then I'm going to pull straight up. And I'm going to check and see if my wing's on there straight. If it's not, I'm going to tweak it just a little bit. I want to make sure that this thing is absolutely lined up with that hook point so it'll really swim well. Okay. I'll make a couple more wraps, get that thing in there tighter. And that's got the wings set pretty well. I'm going to look again. Looks just right. I'm going to come in with my scissors, lift up on those butts, and trim them out of there. Okay, now I'm just going to build a head. I don't want to go back into where I tied that wing down because I don't want to move that wing around now that I got it where I want it. I'm just going to build a nice little head here. Come back toward the back of the head. Grab the whipper. And paint the head all the way from the back to the front. Okay, now I've got a couple of stray fibers on this side of the golden pheasant. The way that I'm going to get rid of them is I'm just going to yank them out of there. I'm going to look over on this side and that looks good. And that's a finished black and gold after I put about four coats of Man of War varnish or, or Sally Hansen's hard as nails on it. And it's, the head's nice and shiny, that'll whack those steelies.